What's up guys, welcome to today's video. On the video today, I'm gonna share with you guys a quick and easy technique on how to cut a long bob using the Tri-Razor. The Tri-Razor is a brand new tool that we just launched on Shop FSE. It's available worldwide for pre-order right now. So if you guys are looking for a new razor tool, this is the one. This little razor is three tools in one. You've got your 100% cutting side, you've got two texturizing sides that take out different amounts of hair. It's a super fun tool to cut hair with. I get excited every time I get to use it. So Again, it's available for pre-order. Go to shopfse.com after this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Here we go. So what I like to do is I like to split up the front and back and also the fringe area. I went a little bit deeper with the fringe area today. So I'm gonna show you guys that right here. So we created a triangle shape right here in the fringe. And then what I'm gonna do is a couple sections that I haven't shown you yet. Right here on the sides, I created a diamond shape on top, which I'll show you guys in a second. That really just took out that crown area. And then what I'm gonna do is take from this point Point where that point comes at right there and go right down to the hairline right here. So this separates the hair that wants to be in the back and then we're gonna part away the hair that wants to live on the side. So just like that. Flip this up nice and tight. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. From that point of the diamond down to the hairline. Comb this over nice and tight. Now I've got a diamond shape on top. Let me uh, flip to the top camera here. So you can see, so we've got our diamond shape. So point into the front and it goes out to the corners here and then back to the occipital bone in the back here. Separate this whole top crown area. So that's the sectioning breakdown. The way that I'm gonna start this haircut is I wanna start it in the back and we're gonna work on a pivoted line cutting round layers within the haircut. I'm not worried about the perimeter length yet and I'm gonna start by taking a vertical section straight out of the center back. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a vertical section right here and I'm gonna bring it straight out from the head straight in the back here. Now I don't wanna remove too much density from the bottom. Let's just pretend like this client and really the reality of this mannequin here, it's got a little bit skinnier hair. Because it's thinner, I don't wanna go in and just kinda of carve at it. I want, and, or scoop out too much weight. I wanna just make a nice little line throughout. I bring the hair out, straight out to me like this. And then I take 100% cutting side. So I just go in with my cut elevation, straight out from the head and then 100% cutting. And I just slide right through the hair. So you can see how easy that just pop passes through. Now I'm gonna take another line right next to it. And I'm gonna take a little bit of what I just cut as a guideline. And I'm gonna push that guideline over to my new hair, just like that. I'm gonna come out and see my line right there. So then I'm just gonna slide and layer through. I'm not worried about the perimeter length. That's one thing I definitely want you guys to understand today is the perimeter length I'm gonna cut later. And I'm gonna take another section and that's gonna come straight out from where it lives. This is why it's so important to get your sectioning right at the beginning because I don't want to create short pieces around the ear as I'm cutting this round shape. Typically when you cut a round shape and you're coming around the corner, you end up working your way up the hairline, you get shorter hair. Don't want to do that in this cut. I want to keep the hair even all the way throughout. So this section goes right to the hairline. So I know that I'm not cutting any hair shorter as I get behind the ear. Here, turn the head a little bit. So know that I'm coming straight out from the head, pulling the guide to the new hair. I see the guide right there through the hair. And then I just slide. I'm going to go overhead so you guys can see the last section here a little bit of the old right here and I'm bringing guide over to the new hair. See my guide, grab my tri razor, slide. So that is the right hand side. It's a little bit concave in my opinion, in my mind, but when you hold the hair out like this, you can see how it gets short to long. So right there, short to long and cut it just like that. So it's almost concave. I would say it's about this sort of angle. So to me, I think of concave, like when I'm cutting hair, I think of concave as a collapsed shape or collapsed uh, section of hair. To me, this is concave. Some people say that you have to really kind of shift your elbow up and cut short to long this way. I guess it just depends on your thought process. For me, it's a really nice, just layered effect. So now we're gonna do the right side. layers really come into life. Remember, I'm cutting this shorter. I don't care about the perimeter. That's why the perimeter looks less dense right now. And really what I'll do is I'll do it now. So then that way you guys can really get a visual for it. So then once I cut my layers, then it skinnies up the bottom and I can really decide now that I've got the layers where I want them. Now I can decide where I want that line to be. You can come in. I'm going to cut where hair gets a little bit weaker. I want to go just a half inch above the weak part of the hair to make it look strong. So we'll do a nice blunt line with our scissor. 
There'll be a nice balanced line in the back of the head. For me, it's the combination of the creative freedom of the tri razor mixed with you know the precision of a scissor, and that combination is just awesome. So now you can see, take a look at it. A lot of hair at once, real simple. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna lift this up in the air. Again, not worried about that perimeter length. Was it your intention to use thin hair? Zelda, good question. Not really. I kind of take these mannequins as they are, or I just put a thought on the haircut itself, like just pretending that they have thin hair, but this one actually does have pretty thin hair, so it works out. This is a great thin hair haircut to work with because we're creating blunt lines. We're not taking out too much weight. We got a disconnection that's gonna fall over the top. And then right here, I'm gonna work a layering technique with the tri razor with some elevation. We're gonna create some layering around the face. So here's the thing. So when you cut with a razor, I'm gonna take this in half because I don't wanna put that much in my hand. So when you cut with a razor, the more you move your hand back and forth, the more layered you get. So as I grab the hair, the more I move this up and down, the more layered I'm gonna get. Like if I held it up and cut it with a scissor. You don't necessarily have to hold it up in the air. Just know that the more you move it, the more layered effect you get. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna move back and forth. Here, in and out, in and out, just like this. And this will give me a more layered effect. I'll grab the rest of the hair here, got my guide, and I'm just gonna move back and forth and get a more layered effect. Here's the other thing that can come up. So take a look at this. So when you look at these layers, all the pieciness around the face, but it doesn't just stop there. That's not the only spot where there's layers. The layers go all the way through, but start to get a little bit longer towards the back, which is our goal. When you bring everything forward and cut it here, it's shortest at this point and gets longer towards the back. So we're kind of filling in where that hair would get the weakest in fine hair. Let's just say somebody had thick hair that you were working with, a couple little tricks that you could do as well. That's where the texturizing sides come in because as I'm pulling this hair up, if they had thick hair, I could start by going in with a texturizing side and take some of this texture out like that, push it, remove some of that weight, then recomb and then start to slide through it. So you could really remove a bunch of weight from this haircut as well if you want it. Now I'll bring the rest of this hair up. There's my length. So I'll go 25, just take out a little bit of weight and then go 100 and pass through. Now we got layers going on both sides. We got layers going on in the back. Now we're going to go into the fringe. I'm gonna do a shorter fringe on this one because I want to and I already filmed a video with a longer one. Should be coming out in the next day or so. So let's go a little shorter today. This is gonna be more of a textured fringe. I'm gonna go straight down the center, part it. Let's go this side first. So nice little slight diagonal forward parting in the front. So now I have a little bit sectioned out of the front here. So now I don't want to take a section too much thicker than the blades that are on the razor, right? I'm going to pinch this just slightly into the middle, into the middle of the nose. And then that's where I'm going to start just kind of working a soft back and forth movement on the hair. That pinch of the hair pulls the hair together. When you pull the hair together, you get over direction. So now I've got a slight over direction into the fringe, which gets longer on each side. And I'm going to continue to do that motion here. Grab another little triangle out of the front. This I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side same thing on the opposite side here just taking out a triangle again make sure that that triangle looks pretty balanced before you clip it away then i bring these two pieces together right into the center make sure that you get all the hair from the scalp nice and tight and then i have it here i pinch it right in the middle in the same spot that i was and then i come in right here and i work back and forth pinch the hair right into the middle and i just work slightly back and forth until you get through the hair now the more you pass back and forth obviously the more shattered it gets if you go too much it'll layer it way too much. You can see how soft it's looking already. I know it's in their eyes. I want to leave it a little bit longer. I'll do a little bit of detail work when I dry it. People get mad at me because I leave them too long, but I don't care. It's my it's my uh, thing. So we keep working through until we get to the end of that triangle section that we created at the very beginning of the cut. So I can see where these layers start in the side of the haircut. Same thing on the opposite side, finding that triangle right where the hairline is. If you go too far, so let's just bring this forward. If you go too far in the fringe area, past this hairline right here, you're gonna end up with sideburns because you'll cut this hair short. You don't wanna do that. So make sure as we're cutting this fringe, your section ends at that hairline. Now, bringing it in here, pinching it together up here 
here with the razor. I'm just working those small. I'm not even barely pressing the razor in. If I press it too hard, it'll cut right away. I don't really want it to cut right away. I want that softness to kind of work on its own. So now when you look, take a look at that. A nice short to long soft fringe around the face. Now I can go in and do some detail with my scissors later when I get a try, but to just go through a haircut and cut it is, is really creative and unbelievably fast. Can we do such fringes techniques on curly hair too? Absolutely. I will be doing uh, a bunch of different videos to showcase how to do stuff on curly hair. It works really well. You guys saw the promo video. It cuts through curly hair just as well, just as fast. Now I've got this diamond shape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split this diamond shape into four pieces. So here's one, separate that for now. So I'll go back to it. Now I'm going to cut this into two. Yeah, if you guys are uh, wondering where you can get the razor, if you go to shopfse.com, it's available pretty much worldwide. At this point, go here, shop FSE. So then I cut this section in half. Now I've got one, two, three, four sections. I'm going to twist this one, flip it two, and I'm going to split this section here in half as well. So now I've got four triangles on the top crown area. You could cut this sides very similar to this all the time, but then decide this can really change her haircut in general. These four pieces, you could either do short layering through it. You could do longer, you could remove weight. You could keep the, the length quite a bit if you wanted to hold some longer hair around the, the haircut shape. So there's so many different options. For me today, I'm going to cut these pieces to go towards the front. I'm going to over direct them forward. And then actually I'm going to do something a little different. I just changed my mind. I'm going to take these two sections. I'm going to put them together. We're going to do the same concept. So I'm going to grab this hair here. I'm going to pinch it in my hand just like this. And then I'm going to work just a little bit uh, wider with the razor back out. I'm going to work a little bit heavier strokes with the razor to create a more layered effect into the back. So we're going to go just like this. And I'm just going to work through that sec. That hair falls, but really it's going to fall into the back and it's going to be layered. Then I grab these two sections here and I'm going to bring them over top into the front of the head, but I'm not going to bring them as far forward. I'm going to keep them a little more elevated. And I take my tri razor in front of the head, still, still going over top there. And I just work some more layers into it. all of that stuff is falling into the front. Now, when you push it towards the back, so you guys can see when you push it towards the back, you'll see the explosion of layers that happens through it, which I love tons of texture. And the heaviest point of that top is now sitting here over top of that kind of that shape that we created at the very beginning in the back. shape here. So I want to show you the layers first. So you can see one of the best things here, I think that we created today is really just being able to take somebody that has finer hair, give her layers, quite a bit of layers, but still have it feel thick and full. So you can see through here, you have that layering. This is the stuff that came over top and we cut in the very front. So I like that. And then as you see on the sides, you know, we skinny that up a little bit. We have this kind of backwards feeling off the face feel, uh, which really opens up the face for the cut. Same thing on the opposite side. And, uh, and then we did that fringe area, which to me could be a little bit shorter if you guys wanted it to be. Don't feel pressured. Obviously, depending on your client and how they like fringe, I like a little extra length in there, but that's pretty much it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and also subscribe to us right here on YouTube. And go to Shop FSE if you'd like to pre order your Tri Razor right now. We'll start shipping December 21st all over the world. So wherever you're at, go to shopfse.com and get your Tri Razor. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you liked it. Let me know if you have questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Thank you.